Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. And welcome today to my review of what could be one of the most overspecced and underpriced watches that I have ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present to you the world's cheapest deep dive watch. 1,000 meters of water resistance for under 100 US dollars. It almost sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? But can it be true? Can it possibly be true? And would it actually make a difference if it wasn't true? Now, I don't have a hydraulic press. I have owned one pressure tester, but it only went up to 6 ATM. So I cannot state categorically whether or not this watch does indeed have 100 ATM of capability. But what I thought we'd do today is have a look at the watch and then take it apart and have another look at the watch. There will be some excellent clues for us in the form of the case construction, the number and location of the seals that this watch uses, and the thickness of the sapphire crystal in particular. And you know what? I didn't even pay $100 for this. You can buy these all day long for less than $85. I will of course leave a link in the description of the video to the place that I got mine from if you're keen to pick one up for yourself. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. All right, before we even get into the box today, and certainly before we take this thing apart, can I just say, this watch is great. This is one of the best sub $100 dive watches that I have reviewed on the channel, and I have reviewed a ton of sub $100 dive watches on the channel over the years. So many so that I have made top 10 videos about it. So I feel like I know what I'm talking about. I reckon this is right up there in the top five with the Casio Duro, Vostok Amphibia, all of those Steel Dive, Aries Dive, Willard combos, and this thing. It is that good. So if you like the look, if you like the style, don't worry about the depth rating. Who on earth is going to use it, practically speaking? Anyway, go for it. Buy with confidence for under 85 US dollars. Anyway, what do you get? You get a pointless user manual. You get a little hang tag. You get a... Standard AliExpress unsigned warranty card. You get one of those little tools for removing the links in the bracelet, which I'm not gonna bother with. Talking of which, three spare links. Now I've got a seven inch wrist. I had to remove three of these. I could possibly remove a fourth. That means you're up to eight, eight and a quarter inch wrist maximum, I reckon, before you're putting this one on a rubber strap. More on that later though, I probably would put this on a rubber strap. And if I can put it back together again successfully, I probably will put it on a rubber strap. And there it is. I certainly wouldn't describe it as a homage. It's not a one for one of anything. A little bit generic. Definitely got a lot of Seiko Marine Master and Seiko Tuna vibes. It is the quintessential hockey puck in terms of its styling. In terms of its dimensions though, 46 mil in diameter, but don't worry about that quite yet. 14.3 mil thick, but look at those lugs. Those are hidden lugs today. I measure the lug to lug at 40 millimeters. Assuming you're okay with a watch this big on your wrist, this is gonna fit even smaller than average size wrists, no problem at all. 22 mil between the lugs, now the bracelet is 22, 22, there is no taper, so it's back up to 24 at the clasp today. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist though, three links removed, 194 grams, it is a whopper. Screw down crown, of course, because it has a claimed 1,000 meters of water resistance. That is a piece of hopefully rather thick double domed sapphire crystal with a decent amount of anti-reflective undercoating. Look at that. You can still see the dial even under my studio lights. And the movement in the back is, of course, a Seiko NH35. Look, it even says so on the screw down stainless steel case back. I always have a laugh at the Addis Dive logo. It's like a kind of mishmash of diving emblems there. You've got the goggles, you've got the harpoon guns, you've got some random stars. Doesn't really matter though, does it? All stainless steel construction, of course, 316L throughout. Case finish is very, very simple, but then again, look at the case. It is very, very simple. There are no lugs, so you can't get the lug polishing or brushing wrong when the watch doesn't have any lugs to begin with. It is just a big puck, this thing, just a big solid lump of metal. All they've done really is put a fine brush all the way around the middle. Helium escape valve on the nine o'clock side, that's what you'd wanna see for a watch that claims this much water resistance. Now the bezel on this one, it's kind of sawtooth upper edge to the bezel. Now initially, it's a little bit stiff, but once it gets moving, 
it's not too bad at all. Everything lines up okay, but there is quite a little bit of bounce to get it situated. And believe it or not, for your $85, they've signed the crown as well. They've put that kind of mass of diving paraphernalia on there too. Bracelet. Big chunky watch needs a big chunky bracelet, and this is kind of a big chunky bracelet. 22 all the way and solid link engineer style. However, look at the gaps between the links. Now, big gaps means big flex. It just doesn't feel particularly reassuring. So it's bulky, but it's not particularly well made. I guess something had to give for 85 bucks. Straight cut end links is a cost saving, as is the clasp. Super, super basic. Now, this is a 24 mil clasp. You can pick these big clasps up on AliExpress for about $10 or less that will be milled rather than pressed. If you're persevering with a bracelet, I would recommend you do that. Dial and hands, quick look before I pull this thing apart. Jet black dial, high polish ceramic, fully loomed bezel insert, I came pretty remarkable. High polish surround, so those applied indices, and a color matched date window down there at the six o'clock, keeping things symmetrical. Big sword hand shape, but I do like what they've done there with that second hand all white needle, and believe it or not, it is loomed as well, just ridiculous. Addy's Dive logo, again printed on, though whether or not it should be is another matter. Automatic 1000 meters emblazoned there very proudly above the date complication. Printed minute track around the outer edge, fully graded bezel as well, Arabics on the tens and dash marks on the minutes and further dash marks on the fives. Clean, easy to read, nice big triangles up there at the 12 o'clock as well. Overall, like I said, a bit generic, but pretty nice looking. And full of loom, bezel insert is full of loom, the hands, the dial, and check the second hand. Fully loom second hand, really nice touch, $85. I say it again, I wasn't expecting that. Now they claim BGW9, whether it is or whether it's a cheap Chinese equivalent, I'm not sure. When I turn the speed up though, it does okay for itself. You might expect it to be all over by 10 minutes, but it's still going by 20. When I slow it down again, you can see everything there. It's perhaps not super bright, but it is by no means a disgrace for the price unlike a lot of watches that I have reviewed sub 100 US. And there it is on top of my seven inch wrist. It looks pretty good and very, very legible thanks to the size and thanks to the big hands, big indices, big numerals on the bezel insert. Like I said, don't necessarily be worried about the 46 mil diameter dimension because this one has a ridiculously short 40 mil lug to lug. It fits me very nicely. The bracelet though, yeah, okay, I got a decent fit and it does balance out the head of the watch in terms of weight, but if this watch was mine, that would be the first thing that went. Hang on, this watch is mine. And there we go, Barton Elite Silicone 22mm, super comfortable, nice matching brush hardware, and drops the weight down to a mere 129 grams, which is still pretty heavy, but yet yeah, much more manageable for most people. I ran a 44mm with hidden lugs as my daily for years, so this one is only a little bit bigger than that. Moans and niggles before I pull this thing to pieces. Well, the bracelet, as discussed, isn't up to much. It is the weakest link, but easily remedied, as you just saw. The color match date wheel is lovely, but it's not particularly legible. The printing there of the six isn't nearly as noticeable as everything else on the dial. The looks are somewhat generic overall, and the Addy's Dive logo is an acquired taste and you're gonna have to get used to the taste because it's pretty much all over the watch. But for under $85, this thing is a bargain. All right, let's reward it by pulling it to bits. All right then, it looks like I would have a quick and dirty demolition job is in the offing for this Addy's Dive. Sorry about that, mate. What are we looking for then? What key features are we looking for to see if this watch actually has a chance of meeting its claimed water resistance rating? Well, as discussed, Helium escape valve opposite the crown or wherever they want to put it, but a helium escape valve. I will be hoping for a gasket on the case back. I'll be hoping for a gasket on the crown. Ideally, I'll be hoping for a gasket around the crystal and crystal of three to four millimeters thickness if this thing is actually going to be 10 ATM water resistant. Let's find out. All right, that's the first gasket I was hoping to find, a decent rubber seal around the case. Let's move on and get the crown out. No seals around the crown tube though. Not the end of the world, but I was hoping for one there, to be honest. 
All right, so the movement rotates, but it doesn't seem to want to come out. I'm gonna unscrew these screws on the bezel and see if I get any further that way. All right, well done, Addy's Dive. You win today, you have defeated me, you live to fight another day. I couldn't get the movement out. It looks to me that the dial is far broader than the movement, so perhaps I'm popping the bezel off. I couldn't get the bezel off. Anyway, who knows? I didn't want to muller the watch. It's too nice for that, and it was looking like I was going to muller it. So what do we got? Well, we have got a decent thick case back. We have got a case back gasket. Crown with a fairly long crown tube, but no seal. Look at that though, that must be a centimetre of thickness on the case, that is enormous. So, to 100 atmospheres of water resistance, it's possible. The Beyond the Press channel has tested a bunch of cheap Japanese and Chinese made dive watches with remarkable results. Here's a Kronos hitting nearly 300 atmospheres, nearly 3 kilometres of equivalent depth, it was fine. But does it really matter if it's got a 1000 metres of water resistance anyway? Probably not, not to me anyway. It is unlikely to see more than about two meters on my wrist at the local swimming pool. And I would imagine that's the same for most users. So there you have it, a well-made, well-specced, big hockey puck of a thing on your wrist for 85 bucks. You can't really go wrong. If you don't fancy this, why not check out the Casio Duro or the legendary Vostok Amphibia instead. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.